What's up guys? This is the Rifeman and I am back to bring you to the next episode of my Empire Total War Let's Play as the Mysore, as the Kingdom of Mysore. And to pick up where we left off, we are going, we have launched a force to attack a Matnagar and take it back from the Portuguese as well as reigniting our war against the Maratha Confederacy because a lot of the places actually looks like a few of these territories are actually their economy is shrinking. But yes, we're going to take a Madagascar. Then we're going to occupy the port of Bombay with a sloop. Then we're going to raid their trade port. And this force wants to make for Ahmedabad. You guys want to take Nagpur and then try and cover this crossing. You need to advance north-east to try and intercept as many troops as you can before they uh, realise what's going on. But let's take out the Portuguese garrison here at Madagascar. This could blow up in our faces, kind of, because the Portuguese have a couple of armies just sat in Lisbon doing nothing, so there's an opportunity for them to deploy those troops, but at the same time they may feel like they can't, because if they do, Spain will destroy them. So we want to be a bit careful, but ultimately uh, I think we're okay. Deploy my guns on this high ground. It's their force is mostly militia, but they have mortars, so... Keep my musketeers wide to go around the town. Ooh, some of my Islamic swordsmen. Yeah, they're pretty good. So they're, like I said, they're like... They're like, um... Hindu warriors, but just a flat upgrade and significant... Well, not almost a flat upgrade, but significantly cheaper. We are going to advance up aggressively because, again, mortars are mortars are bad. Okay. Might get all of my mobile troops out on the right flank because it looks a bit isolated back here. Yeah, all of their troops are just militia and armed citizenry. Yeah, mortars have engaged, or begun engaging. Overwhelm of that flank. The right flank is a bit is a bit exposed, but I think with my melee infantry in the town and all of my cavalry and so on outside of the town. Speed up the redeployment. My artillery is pounding the right flank anyway. I want to run one unit up forward close to try and engage their mortars at close range. We'll start engaging their infantry, then we're going to mop up this flank and sweep across the hill. Get engaging. There we get some volley into the militia. They're upset about what's happening. First regiment of militia looked like they might be about to charge into my line, so let's charge my Hindu musketeers in there. Okay, 
Charge my cavalry into that. Well, my camels into a unit of colonial militia. Retarget my guns to attack the blob. Islamic swordsmen attack the Philok armed citizenry. I took a volley of armed citizenry fire, and that was it. They broke. Probably come back. Cavalry's m my camels are mowing down the colonial militia. Yeah, they'll probably come back. They haven't lost very many men. You guys might want to redeploy a bit wider. Kill the militia a little bit more till they're shattered. There they are. Redirect my guns. Firelock Arm Citizenry is going to route, so let's just get more troops over to the high ground. Charge in, because there's a big morale drop here. Excellent stuff. Islamic swordsman into the center. Where'd my general go? Pivot two units to square off with the militia. Two might be a, a bit much. Sending in my Hindu musketeers in for melee combat might not have been the best idea. The other flank is shattered, broken, shattered. Break the Phylocom citizenry, redirect my gunfire to attack ground. Get my general up here. So you can attack the mortars. Take them out of commission. Then charge into the rear of these men. My dervishes have held on magnificently. Charge down the hill. Hit the militia in the rear. Now the hunter has become the hunted. Get my melee, get my cavalry over here. You guys can knock out the armed citizenry. The Islamic swordsmen are going to cut through the colonial militia incredibly effectively. Kizobashi Musketeers engage. So my Kizobashi Musketeers have swords. They fight with swords rather than bayonets. The dervishes have routed, but all that's going to do is provide another front for my Islamic swordsmen, my cavalry. That's their general right here. I could fire bows and arrows into the mix, but I think this is going to be a bit more decisive. Mind you both attack them. There we go. So we might lose a few more men doing it this way than we might need to, but these units are all in fairly good shape. 
Get my general nearby. I don't think he needs to be in combat for them to complain about there being scary units nearby. One of these units is stuck, so let's bring my camels across to this other fight. The unit of militias upset. General's bodyguard is wavering. Camels would have been better to get involved. Charge the camels in. Maybe my general too. They're not going to last very long because they're completely surrounded. The presence of elephants might be enough to tip the morale scale over to one side. Which it looks like it is. It's like Rome Total War now. Shaken, shaken, shaken. Get my camels in there. These militia have held out admirably well, but the militia will soon clear them out. The, the elephants will soon clear them out, I should say. There you go, now, they break, now they've broken. What they're going to do is just uh, run through my troops and then get slaughtered. But there we go, so that's a Madnagar secured. For our empire. Good, good, good. So I'm going to send a damage sloop to occupy Bombay. I'm going to send my race built galleon to go raid Surat. Let's repair the government building. Let's replenish. My army, you're within spitting distance of Nagpur. Ideally, you'll push out and secure this crossing here, towards Ahmedabad. So I don't know where you're going to land, but it's probably going to be somewhere near Arcot, which we will then destroy you. Mysore's coming back into the fold a bit. Two more turns till we get Spinning Mule. Apart from that though, 2,400 income, so yeah, we're going to start to run a bid out of puff. So let's hit end turn. The Dutch are invading Cuba. Interesting. It looks like they might have actually increased their empire in Europe. So Spain's got their work cut out for them. At least, they're, well, at least they're not hitting me. Yeah, our cart was taken, which is good. I think, in general... Well, I said our income could be better. Losing trade with the the Mughals was a bit of a kick, kick in the knackers, because I was getting a bit used to having six, 7,000 a turn, instead of two and a half, barely 3,000. But we will do what we must. Really, we couldn't. We can't afford to have to let the Mughals um, develop too much. Otherwise, they would just become unstoppable. We need to. Main, we need to maintain the the uh, maintain the momentum. But my force that's in Arcot is going to deal with that Mughal force that's attacked us. It's going to res resupply, slightly expand, and then take Calcutta. And if I can take Nagpur, Cuttack, and Calcutta, and then force them to the peace table again, that would be very, very good. That gives us a whole bunch more um, cities to administer and towns to grow. Question is, though, how do they respond? Because we know they've got plenty of armies. A 
Okay, so they're run heading towards Hyderabad. They're advancing back towards Ahmadnagar. They need to deploy towards Mysore so I can deploy my Arcot force west immediately. They're going to do some raiding and probably head towards Hyderabad. So those troops I've recruited in Mysore, they're probably going to be sent northeast to Hyderabad to act as a garrison to allow my Arcot force to swing west. What do they break? That. That's annoying. I wonder, is there a possibility that I can take Nagpur and Katak and then force them to the negotiating table again? So let's take these units, get them up to Hyderabad. You guys get into... Stay out of Mysore. Again, we might be leaving Arcot a bit exposed. Ultimately, we could just try and hit you. But I want... Ultimately, I need to make the call. Do I push for Katak, which is currently... Not garrisoned at all, and I could just demand the surrender of... I think what I've got to do is attack Nagpur, because there's a con big concentration of troops there. What? I've definitely got to attack them this turn and make sure they, they're dead. You guys need to push up towards Katak, because that's just a... I could demand the surrender of the territory and move on towards Calcutta. You're a bit annoying because you're probably going to hit trade points. Can trade with the Dutch. What I'm going to do is up, up my tax of the nobles, maybe two levels. Two levels is too much. They're not growing anymore. Three thousand eight hundred. I'm happy to. I'm happy to leave them. Give them some wiggle room when times are good, but when times are hard. We need them to pay their share. So yeah, you're going to raid that plantation. It's going to be a bit of a bummer, but you're not going to take Hyderabad. You are going to have to take Nagpur and hopefully annihilate the garrison because we have another Mughal army nearby. But we need to prosecute these attacks with as much aggression as we can possibly get. So my guns, including my bugged gun team, the massive crew, new men bombard from range, actually do we want to deploy as far back as we can realistically get and force them to abandon their howitzers? I think we do. It's a bit of a gamble, because there's nothing to say that their mortars, sorry, not howitzers, their mortars are still within range. An extra gun team here. Two melee units to protect that flank. We got Udo Musketeers to secure the high ground. Because again, it comes down to us having a Hindu Musketeer unit deploy there, I suppose. Keep our pikes behind the line. Or Islamic swordsmen just take position behind the line. The question is, 
says they're firing, but it depends how... What's the actual range like? The range is pretty good. Focus all my guns on that unit, because we've knocked out one gun from each unit. Knocked out another gun. They're wavering. We've massed how it's a fire, we might be able to knock out their mortars. So let's just let our guns do their dangerous work at range. Ultimately, if we're not able to do the damage we want to do, then we will... we will have to advance. Especially when it looks like... Oh, have you just, we've destroyed all their guns. Okay, all of your guns attack that last unit. Because if they're, they're attacking this unit with mortars, they did destroy a gun crew, but it, didn't, it meant that... Okay, we've still got three guns. Okay, they're shaken, so they don't like the artillery fire they're under. A concentrated volley. Then once the actual battle is joined, let's move these melee units out on the flank. To be honest, let's cluster our cavalry units on the left, because this is where we're more easily able to break out. Increasingly upset, they've lost six crew. Bowmen, dervishes behind the bowmen, mercenaries, most of these units in the centre are just pretty pants. You men run into position. Let's commit our flanking element because bowmen are surprisingly devastating. Although it appears they don't actually want to. Just redeploying. Very well. All my mortars again retarget. All my artillery re again re attack their, their mortars. So they're going to be firing at my cavalry, but I'm hoping I can knock out the dervishes fairly quickly. I suppose I should really have sent the Islamic swordsmen into the dervishes rather than dervishes versus dervishes. So Islamic swordsmen charge the bowmen. These troops chase down the dervishes. You guys push the flank. Yeah, you're not. You're a bit. Uh, I think the phrase is buggered.
So you guys might want to redeploy. Well, not redeploy, but fire cannons to shot at the, the main line. To be honest, all of you can probably find better targets because the mortars are going to be ripe for the taking. Dervishes. Aha, commit the dervishes onto the flank of these Hindu musketeers. These pikemen can attack that dervish unit. Make sure you kill their mortars. We don't have to worry about killing the mortars exactly. Make sure these units that are chasing down the enemy know their remit. Make sure they shatter the dervishes if possible. Looks like it's not going to be possible. The bowmen are aware of what's going to happen, so they're just going to uh, try and chase down my cavalry, but unsuccessfully. Might be able to wipe out a dervish unit. So you guys are all attacking the Sikh musketeers. Still trying to take out the bowmen. All my guns cease fire. Now oh, those dervishes are going to escape, which is a bit of a bummer. Levy, infantry mercenaries, go after them. All my guns actually don't fire at nothing. Fire at that garrison musketman. My horsemen chase after those men. You guys both hit the dervishes. get back into the mix. Kill the levy. Dervishes here have been shattered, so keep them advancing towards the enemy. Islamic swordsmen can charge the garrison musketmen. When you guys smash into them, these guys are all gonna break. Crash. So much damage. Bowmen have come back. Retarget. Charge the garrison musketmen around. They try to charge the cavalry around these garrison musketmen. Cease fire the guns. realistically we don't actually have to kill these units 
because they are just garrison units. The only thing we need to do is do it efficiently. Within reason. So the guns have ceased fired. Everyone else has been defeated. So it's down to this two man to charge the garrison musketmen in the rear. Prevent them from firing. My pikes have got into the mix. Huzzah. So that territory is secured. Even actually, what we might even do is we've taken it, but we've destroyed. It's the army that we wanted to destroy, not the troops in it. So what I might actually even do is abandon it immediately, let them take it back. Let them take it back, but treat it as an opportunity to uh, destroy an army. So you've not got the space for two units, but I think could probably find it. Although maybe pull pull the dervishes back out. The you men combine. So you guys could push down here, which could cause some issues, but not massive ones. You can push towards the. No, oh, I don't necessarily want you to push towards the enemy nearly bankrupt us to finish to rebuild your army your let's get two camels to join you two camels to join you can't replenish anything with the money we, we've got well, what about you Okay, you're a bit isolated, but we'll see what happens to you before we make a decision about what to do. One more turn till we get uh, Spinning Mule. Yeah, I don't really want to give up the... I mean, I've, not got, I've definitely not got the money, but I don't want to give up the momentum. That's the main thing. I don't want to give up the momentum. and I don't want to let the Moogles dig in, at least excessively. I don't mind them digging in a bit. But let's see. Hmm. So again, the Ottomans, <laughs> the Ottomans in classic Ottoman style, are going to be dragging down the end turns quite uh, significantly. But then again, hopefully, if they're as they're at war with Russia, well, that's probably why it's taking so long. To be honest, they're having to negotiate trying to get troops to the Balkans rather than the uh, Ottoman region. Well, not the Ottoman region, the Ankara region. Sorry, they can't cross the Dardanelles so easily because you have to get it. You have to put them into the city, then take them out of the city. You can't just move around it; otherwise, it'll make you run around the Black Sea. So that's probably well. That's my theory, anyway. That co what causes a good chunk of Ottoman end turn problems is because they can't work out to cross. They don't necessarily work out how to cross the strait properly, but they don't also advance around the... they don't want to put, move around the Black Sea. The Mughals are... Ooh, you got two, Satara. Don't raid stuff. Okay, good. <laughs> I can do with them not... I can I can manage other plenty of things, I just don't want them to attack. Obviously our little... Oh, it's unfortunate it draws in our sloop to the south. We didn't get our cot. 
They're going to retake the city. Again, I don't mind them retaking the city. It was the destruction of the... the army I was interested in. But everything seems to be progressing as it planned. So we need to move back to Satara, because that's where one of the Maratha armies has advanced, which is which would immediately cause issues. 3,300. Take Katak, which is immediately worth 600 in cash. That's not bad. Don't infiltrate Calcutta. Calcutta gets a mean garrison. Yeah, you guys need to take out this force. You guys need to take out this force. This force is depleted. Then again, so are you. Let's get down here first. Back you go, Mughals. Back you go. Push them back up into their territory. Every army we destroy, as much as we possibly can, is, is something they have to build, at the very least, rather than uh, replenish. Every unit we destroy, we gain a one-turn grace period. One turn, we get a one-turn grace period from those troops being rebuilt. So our guns are going to trundle up to the high ground again, form a... Indian Musketeer front line. Ooh, not as many pikemen as I would like. Kizobashi behind the lines. So we're very much going to be relying on square formations most of the time for our protection. Take advantage of this terrain feature. Get our guns up to the high ground. Dervishes are handy. Kizobashi, for our purposes, are going to behave as melee troops. Camels. Musket line form up rapidly because it looks like the camels haven't yet made up their mind quite what they want to do. Looks like the decision will be push around the flank. You guys hold, ready for the camels to get into position. Guns are in position, unlimber. Okay. Keep advancing. Fall back to this pinch point. So, guns focus on you soften up those camels, you guys soften up those camels. These guys are going to be involved in a bit of a musketry battle. Push my cavalry up to continue that, that uh, battle. Okay, they've redeployed a unit of camels. 
Let's take our line and push down the hill even more. Retarget the guns against the camels sat back at the rear here. I need pikes. But there you go, that camel unit's routed. Commit everyone to drive my left flank forward. Deploying pretty hard. But there we go, so we charge the camels, enemy camels on the right flank. Hit the guns attack that unit of camels. Actually, attack the men in the center. Charge these men up. You make a fire by rank into the enemy mass. Bow unit is shattered. You men continue to advance. Make sure the gunners are attacking the centre. Okay, let's get the Camels into the center. The actual musket lines. Well, we're, well, we're just we're just chewing these guys up. You guys charge those those chaps. You guys charge them. You guys charge into the rear of these pikemen. They're broken too. They're broken. They're broken. These dervishes can run to those dervishes, but it looks like the, the guts of their force is going to break. Another volley into the two man. Cease fire. Don't cease fire. Attack that unit of camels there. Position you guys like that in case they come back. Okay, there goes the enemy camels as well. You men charging hit the dervishes, so the focus is Islamic swordsmen because they're the better melee unit. I knew they'd come back. We outnumber them though. Advance my line up against the square. Islamic swordsmen should cut these camel gunners open, considering how considering how um, these are camel gunners. They aren't the actual they aren't the actual uh, camel nomads themselves. They're that much worse in combat. Okay, you guys can get to the action. A lot of artillery routing here. Continue. It's micro. Micro you guys to damage or to destroy these artillery pieces because these are quite valuable things to take out.
can go after the mercenaries. You guys... Actually, you guys can go after them. You're both going after them. Then go after that one-foot artillery crewman. A lot more damage to the Indian mercenaries. Okay, the crewman is the last one alive. And they're down. Awesome. Lost 450 men, they lost 2,630. So the new men can take those camel reinforcements. And re-advance. I mean, that one unit of dervishes isn't going to actually be able to replenish unless I spend the money to do it. So let's do it. And you to attack Saeed Khan, which we are going to do. <laughs> We're pretty much just chewing up a lot of Mughal troops in this episode. There's no, no way around it. No way around it at all. But we're doing good work. We're doing the Lord's work. So the guns are going to go up onto the high ground with an infantry. Well, we're going to have an infantry, a classic infantry front line. Split up our melee troops on either flank to try and do a better job at surrounding them. Put some melee troops behind the line. Split up my camels on either flank. General in the centre. If they let us get to there, that would be perfect. We do get some reinforcements, but I'm not overly bothered about reinforcements. I'm not sure we're going to need them. Nah, it's just a unit of musketeers. Might be being a bit aggressive. Left! Go left! When you get to the bottom of the hill, just break away! You, you guys gonna charge? Got a bit of an opportunity here. Yeah, I don't want you to. You can hit those desert warriors. Everyone else, they're getting lashed by fire by rank. Such as it is, my these aren't necessarily the best infantry for doing that kind of thing. It's handy really, they've got infantry mixed up with cavalry, so Make sure you guys run over here to try to help out this unit of dervishes. They're getting attacked by a unit of pikes as well. Get the cavalry around the flank, get the Hindu warriors in as well. Hindu warriors hitting the flank of the pikes. Surprise, fool! You might be fairly good at fighting enemy infantry, but not guys with their own swords. No, sir. Charge my camels in to knock out these folks. Counter charge the dervishes with my own swordsmen. Charge the camels in the rear with my own camels. do 
doing some good damage here. Camel Nomads need to be chased. Okay, you guys pursue them. I need to get my camels to work. Surround and destroy the camels so when they rout, they get slaughtered. You guys counter charge, you guys charge in. You two units cease fire. Good, they got shattered. You men chase them down. Get my camels to chase down the pikemen. Ah, oh, my reinforcement's coming in from right behind them. I'm going to continue. Let's chase the enemy force down to just make sure we kill as many of them as possible. Okay, so where's this other unit? There it is. Pikeman destroyed. One unit there. Uh, you guys have gone on a wild goose chase. They're going to flee. As are these guys. Very tired, very tired. There we go. We've got some to stop to fight us. If we can make enough ground, there we go, when you right click him he'll stop to fight and then change his mind but then die. Ha <laughs> ha! Awesome. There we go. 200 men left. Let's see you men replenish. Reinforce this army here at our cot. It would be great if we could take you out but we can't reach you yet. I think we've, we pulled the rug out from underneath the um, Moogles there a bit. Aha! So actually I can move you guys out, take this dervish unit, put it inside here, combine there we go. Yes, sir. Ah, oh, there they are. Your Majesty. But yeah, I need pike reinforcements for the front. So in terms of okay, so send a sloop around to Bombay. Oh, you have no movement points. Ha <laughs> ha, sucker. No ports at the coast to raid. So that's the only one worth raiding, but it's burnt down now. So you men advance towards it, then get ready to threaten the Medabad. Or to be honest, do I then say, peace Mughal Empire, force them out of my land, then move up my entire... Well no, but then there's nowhere... I could declare war on port, no. They wouldn't declare, they wouldn't make peace with me anyway. In terms of income, 4444 four, four, four next turn. Still a lot of good trade income, but again, it's not just about trade. Okay, so you've got Spinning Mule. We've gone to Crop Rotation instead to get on to Grenades. It's not fleet destroyed. Yes, yeah, so we've got the next level industry upgrade. Let's hit end turn. You know, the provinces look like they seem to be a bit more 
folk, a bit more involved with the French than they may like, which means it keeps them out of our hair. Otherwise, we maintain the offensive. We we'll attempt to maintain the offensive at Kutak. That was quite a coup to take Kutak. If we can destroy that small force that's running around our rear to the south, the force that's currently there will redeploy to Calcutta and capture that. If we can make some serious inroads against the Mughal Empire, we can break their back, especially if we take the next territory over, over the river in northwest India. That would be incredibly useful. Yeah, it would appear the Ottomans have not broken their time honor tradition of just slowing down <laughs> the end turn phase. A lot of people to move around. But yeah, Russia is emerging as quite a powerful nation, as is Prussia, so I really need to try and consolidate my hold in India as quickly as possible, lest I start to see stacks of Russian and Prussian troops landing on my coast, which, which I then can't defend against. Need to be careful, need to be cagey, but in general we're doing okay. Every turn we keep trade going is another turn that we gain a few extra coins. Yeah, they were always going to attack us at night, but I'm surprised they didn't do it immediately. But we get 500 free damage done to them. So they're splitting their troops and sending the bulk of their men west. They're sending in raiders. Well, to be honest, that army may actually advance up the coastal road towards Katak itself rather than sail, because it has, there's an army behind our lines. So we've sabotaged our weaver's cottage. You men attack the rest of Dilir Singh's force. So you men combine with them. We lost a bunch of trade income because they're raiding our port. So you men need to march forward and take out that force there and potentially we can't advance onto Ahmedabad. Let's repair the garrison built the building at wait, did they sabotage that? They sabotaged the Weaver's Cottage, which is again a bummer because that's actually worth money. We can't repair it. We've got improved grenades, we've improved our command potential. Four field crop rotation. It's quite a quick option. Yeah, you men advance up the road. You men may advance and take Calcutta. Although Kuttak is worth more than Calcutta. Well, Calcutta is worth more in the long run. That's the difference. So what's worth doing is sending you guys to Surat. And destroying this force here. But looking at the timer, I believe it's time to end the episode. So, thanks for watching guys. Hope you've enjoyed. And I'll see you next time for the continuing adventures of war against the Mughal Empire. Cheers everyone.